Hello, everybody. It is 8.17 p.m. Eastern Time, September 23rd, 2017. All right, we have Maria in our satellite view spinning around. We see some big storms exploding around that eye wall. Again, guys, just signs of a healthy hurricane. We are at 115 sustained winds, 115 miles per hour, and the pressure is at 950. Uh, two, I believe. No, it's 950 now. It has dropped a little bit, uh, so that it wouldn't be surprising to see the winds <clears throat> go back up to about 120, maybe 125. Again, now it's battling a little bit cooler water, so I don't think those winds will get much higher than that, and we will have a gradual lowering in wind speeds as this does travel north, but again, this is all about momentum. It's all about this jet stream wall that they are relying on to get to this point on the east coast before Maria makes landfall around North Carolina and possibly close to the border of uh, southeast Virginia. Now, a few things I want to talk to you guys about that we are seeing happen that we were talking about yesterday that we thought would happen. One is the jet stream is not moving as fast as they expected. And you can... Uh, hear this in all different ways. They keep talking about the heat wave we're having in this area of the country and then the cold weather in this part. All I keep hearing in the weather is how long it's going to stay that way and what that means is it means the jet stream is not moving that quick. It's keeping hot weather here and this wall will eventually push that hot weather out and we will start experiencing fall. But until that happens guys, we are going to have hot days here and they're going to get cold and snow here. So once this part of the jet stream that my mouse is uh, moving along gets to us we're not going to feel fall at all it still feels like we're in the middle of summer but again guys the jet stream that's how important it is even though you can't see the bottom part of this U it is there it's just not being shown this is a water vapor uh, visual map so it's showing a lot of the water vapor in the air um, so you're not really seeing this bottom part. It doesn't mean it's not there. It is there. It's just very dry in Southern California and the Baja region. So again, we are we are focusing on this part of the jet stream, this wall here, and we need that here before Maria makes landfall. Now, if this thing slows down any more than it already is, you could wake up tomorrow and see most of these models with a landfall in this area because all that matters right now is this jet stream. It's already gone past the Bermuda Atlantic pressure here, and that's why it started hugging north. So picture that pressure as a ball, and once it got to the left side of that ball, it's riding up the left side of it. And the only other influence we have left to go would be this jet stream. So if not for the jet stream, see how this is basically like a straight line here, and then it just cuts to the right? That's the meeting point. That's when they want, or that's when they think that this wall of pressure from the jet stream is going to get here. So you can see how close of a call this is going to be. If that jet stream slows down, Maria's going to make it up into this area, and then we have to worry about Chesapeake Bay, Delaware, New Jersey, New York. But also, if it's too slow, we may have a landfall. Uh, we may have landfall predictions as early as tomorrow morning. That doesn't mean landfall tomorrow morning. It means that these models will start showing landfall. Also, guys, we got to keep in mind this storm is a rainmaker. There is a lot of water in this storm, just like Harvey was. Harvey did more damage with water than it did with wind. So it's not always about the wind speeds. It's about how much vapor and how much water are in these storms. Guys, even if this thing doesn't make landfall, we could be talking massive amounts of rain in this entire area, all the way up to Delaware, possibly. Uh, 30 inches, 40 inches of rain, some charts were showing. It depends on how long this sits here. And that brings me to another point, guys. We were talking about uh, Jose, and I'm going to bring up the tropical tidbits models to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Now, if you remember, I was talking about the high pressure in the Atlantic and also a high pressure system here that is giving us all this hot, hot weather. And I told you, if Jose wasn't here, those two pressures would connect and almost form a wall where Maria would only have one way to go. It would come up this way, and it couldn't go out because of the pressure that Jose would cause if it wasn't there. Uh, so just check this out for a second. I'm going to move forward. You can see as Jose disappears, you're going to see this high pressure connect right here. And it's going to connect with this pressure. We, we drew this out on the map the other day. So just focus on that. Jose disappears, and you got the H here and the H here for high pressure. And you have this gap that Jose was creating. Now watch this, now that Jose is gone. 
they connect right there. So now we have a full piece of high pressure here, just like we talked about uh, yesterday and this morning. And what that's doing is that's slowing down Maria's movements. So Maria might even sit here for a day or two, and that's not good because it's a rainmaker. And that's where we're going to get severe flooding in these areas if that happens. And that's why I was bringing that to your attention, guys. Jose was playing a significant role in Maria. Had Jose still been here, we would have an area to get out. They may pull that little Fujiwara effect, and, you know, that may be a better situation than what we might be dealing with. But now that Jose is projected to be totally gone, it's actually allowing these high pressures to connect, and that's forming a wall. And that's slowing Maria down, and it's giving it only one place to go, and that's the northeast are basically from North Carolina up is where it has to go until the jet stream gets there. And according to the charts, guys, the jet stream is not going to get here until this thing is just a couple hundred miles off offshore. That's too close for comfort, and that's why these uh, updates are so important, guys. That's why I do them, and that's why these little tiny changes cause drastic differences down the road. So I'm going to hit play here on this model, and we're going to watch the whole thing. So Jose is gone, and that's what... Then Maria gets pressed into the coast, and then the jet stream comes in and takes it out. So again, it's all just a race against time. All these little things are adding up and uh, adjusting the outcome of this storm. Here is the European model. The European model has Jose fizzling out and then causing the same issue, high pressure... And then Maria can't go north anymore. And then it just sits there, possibly flooding the entire coast here of North Carolina and even Virginia, maybe as far north as Delaware, until the jet stream comes. Again, guys, the jet stream wall is right here. So we need this wall to get to the coast before Maria has enough time to make landfall. And the longer that this takes, the more risk we have of all these states here. Again, Florida is almost out of the mix with this hurricane. There will be some effects from the bands and the ocean and stuff like that. Nothing too dramatic. Um, I want to say the same for Georgia. We just don't know yet, guys. You can't... Uh, uh, dismiss a storm until it is well past you or gone. You just can't do it, especially in this season where we have hurricanes doing things that we've kind of never seen before. It's just it's kind of crazy, but that's the that's the risk here, guys, and that's why you're seeing these jagged, uh, sharp turns in these spaghetti models. It's because until Maria has something to force it out of the way, it's going to just move this way. So if there was no jet stream, we'd be going right into South Jersey, pretty much according to these charts. But again, because Jose left, we have that high pressure here. Uh, Maria can't go really much past this area, so it has nowhere else to go but left into the U.S. coast. And that's what we don't want. So we need this wall of pressure from the jet stream to get there first. I'm going to show you Ventu Sky real quick. We're going to run through it. This is the GFS version. Now, the GFS has it coming pretty close, but not quite landfall. Again, it's all going to depend on the jet stream. Here's the 26th by, uh, Tuesday. We still have Lee out here, according to the GFS. Here's Wednesday the 27th. Now, this is about the closest we get, between 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. And now, this is when they're expecting the jet stream wall to start making its influence. So, again, if, it's not, if it doesn't keep up its speed, if it's any slower tomorrow than it is right now, you're going to see the GFS model showing the eye of this hurricane sitting right here on the coast, so we might have a landfall. And that's why I keep trying to tell people that just because these models are showing it off the coast, that doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. It's all based on the jet stream, which is already going slower than predicted. And again, Jose's not here anymore, so this is one big area of high pressure, just like this. And that leaves Maria one way, one way to go, and that's into the coast, right in this area, until the jet stream pulls it back out. That's why this stuff around the storms is so important, guys. So, so important. Again, you see Jose fading here. That pressure is going to connect, and it leaves Maria one area to go, and that's right in this area. So the jet stream cannot get here quick enough. The faster, the better. But unfortunately, guys, this thing's moving so slow, and you can also back that up by listening to even your local weather. The local weather's been showing the jet stream a lot, and they're trying to explain why we have such hot temperatures right now here in this part of the country, and then cold here. It's because this jet stream U is just not moving that quick, so it's keeping all this cold air here 
year, and they're getting snow in the mountains, and that's why it feels like midsummer, in the first day of fall here. It's all because of the jet stream. That's why I put so much emphasis on it, guys. If you know anything from my videos, if you learn anything, learn about the jet stream. It controls everything we deal with as far as weather. Here is our water vapor map along with a wind uh, wind map idea. Again, same deal. Jose's up here fading out. The second Jose fades out enough to where these pressures connect, that's when the only thing we can rely on is the jet stream wall. And you see Maria making its northwest movement now. And that's natural. That's where these hurricanes go once they escape the pressure of the Bermuda Atlantic. It's like a ball. <clears throat> All right, and here's the, the European model again almost kisses the coast and then gets taken out. There you go. Again, the longer it sits here, the more flooding we're going to have. This is a heavy rain-making storm. Lots of lots of rain. Here is the GFS version. I'm going to show you this in Ventu Sky as well. Here's Lee out here. And you see the two pressures connect up here. And then GFS almost has a landfall as well now. GFS didn't show landfall about a couple hours ago. Again, guys, it's all about the jet stream. That's why it's so important. So, so important. I'll repeat that until I'm blue in the face because it's all that matters right now. Sorry, that was my phone. And now we got the nav gem. Nav gem has Jose fizzling out there. High pressures connect right there, causing a wall, forcing uh, Maria to the left towards the coast, sitting there for two days. Look at that. Look at what the nav gem has. <clears throat> because Jose leaves, this high pressure connects, and it has this storm sitting here for two days before it leaves out. If we, if that happens, guys, it doesn't matter if we have a landfall. This entire area will be flooded because the eye of the storm is still in the water, per, uh, sucking up per, uh, precipitation through the middle of it, and it's just pouring it onto the coast with nothing to stop it. So again, guys, it's not just about landfall. It's about being stationary and causing issues. That's why they had such a hard deal with Jose. Even though it wasn't that strong, it was just sitting off the coast, churning up the water and causing issues. And if this happens with this area, it's a lot warm, a lot warmer water, guys. So it's going to bring up a lot more water, and we're going to have some major flooding issues. So again, we wanted Jose to stay there to, call, to create that path for Maria to, to escape from. That didn't happen, and now we need the jet stream wall to get here before Maria makes landfall. It doesn't look like it's going to happen, guys. I'm not saying it won't. I don't know. All I know is what the data is showing me, but at the speed it's going right now, I would not be surprised if we wake up tomorrow and we see the eye of this hurricane making landfall in this area. It's unfortunate, but it's just it's how it's going right now. And once again, here's Ventu Sky. We'll move forward to the 28th. Here's Friday the 29th, and by then they have it moving out, but is it going to be in time? That's all that matters right now. It's all about this jet stream. All right, guys, I hope I covered everything that was important in this update. Again, if any of you want to check out this site, it's weather.msfc.nasa.gov. It's a water vapor chart. It shows you most of the water vapor. You can see these exploding storms around Maria. That means it's still a very strong storm. 115 miles an hour winds is no joke, especially when you're dealing with a rainmaker. Now picture this storm getting stuck right here with the eye wall right off the coast, just spinning and turning for two days. Think about the flooding that would happen. Forget the landfall part. Even if it just sits there, that's going to cause issues. Now if we get landfall, it's a whole other issue. Then we're dealing with the winds and also flooding. We don't want that. So let's just hope that this jet stream for some reason picks up speed and just gets here before Maria does guys that's why this is so important alright if anything significant happens I will let you know really quick there is a dam in Puerto Rico that is about to break unfortunately 70,000 people are being asked to evacuate um, after being destroyed by a hurricane now they have to deal with a broken dam issue um, I believe it's the Guajataka Dam, it's called, and there's 70,000 people in the path of this. If this thing were to break, they would be in big trouble. So guys, just yet more stuff for Puerto Rico to worry about. Bad news is just not ending for them. It's horrible. But that's what we got for now, guys. I appreciate you all sticking with me. If anything significant happens tonight, I will be back here. If not, then tomorrow morning is another day. Thank you all so much.